What's going on everybody? Alex Kaiser here and thanks as always for tuning in to The Clay Table. I hope everyone's staying safe out there in these crazy times. Um, with that being said, I am starting a new series on my channel called Show and Tip. This is the first video. Um, there's been a little bit of a lapse in videos due to technological issues. This is what I was using for all of my video and video editing. Um, an old phone with limited storage eventually gets maxed out. So upgrades have since been made. So you will see some new uh, videos on my channel uh, coming out now and in the near future. Um, so with show and tip, um, I'm gonna be doing a series of videos where I show you a bust that unfortunately I wasn't able to time-lapse or do any video footage of to show you the process. Um, but like Harley Quinn over here, uh, just give you a little bit of a, a tip on, you know, one thing each video kind of help you, um, help if you're interested in this hobby, help you kind of cut through the, uh, the amount of research that you have to do for certain things, um, to produce, uh, a, an outcome or a bust or a sculpt such as her. With that being said, Harley Quinn, I recently made her, uh, I'm working on another one right now. She was made, she was finished about a month ago, approximately. Um, so she is made out of a resin. And as you saw in the thumbnail, this is gonna be a tip about resin. So let's jump on in, shall we? All right, so Harley Quinn, she is looking a little crazy, that I know. However, it's kind of fitting. You know, she is crazy. Uh, she is the Joker's girl, or bitch, should I say. So, yeah, um, it's, it's not an exact look. I know, I've been told she looks like a zombie, and I'm okay with that. Um, every, every bust that I do, I'm learning. Um, so, yeah, so she is made out of a resin, and it is uh, hardened plastic, essentially. Um, you do rotary casting, and we'll talk about that in a minute, to, uh, produce a, the outer layer. Um, of the hollow mold. So I know we'll get there. Um, anyways, the teeth, the upper teeth and the tongue are also made separately and I'll show you the molds for those as well. And essentially what you do is, uh, you know, glue them in once they're done and um, done hardening using whatever resin you choose. Lots of different resins options. Uh, I use one by Smoothcast. So I'm gonna go over that and give you details uh, so that that can help you. But she was a really fun sculpt to make. I uh, luckily found this on Amazon. I was thinking I was gonna have to make it and I'm glad it was just a prop that I could throw on there and call it a day. Um, didn't, wasn't really looking forward to having to make it, but I did want it in the sculpt. Um, so Amazon had one on there as a kind of a Halloween prop and um, the reviews on Amazon were, it was too small for an actual person, which was perfect because, you know, she's not necessarily a one-to-one -one cast, even though her head is, I, I don't know. I mean, I get it's close to one-to-one. -one. Um, so, yeah, so let's get into the resins that I use. Let's set her aside for a second. Um, Smoothcast makes many different resins, and I can't tell you about all of them because I have not delved into all of them yet. However, this is part B, Smoothcast 325, and this is part A. They do come as a set, obviously, because you need both of them. So the Smoothcast essentially is a pourable liquid and hardens fairly quickly. Um, so whenever you have a mold, such as this, this is Harley Quinn's mold. Um, there is a silicone interior here, and that is um, what, I, you know, essentially you pour the silicone over the bust that you're working on, in this case, Harley Quinn. And once you're done with this process, and I'll cover this process in another video, um, you will pour the liquid inside of here, and 
measure it out per you know ounces and or by weight so you will need a digital scale in order to do this once you pour the liquid in here you are going to essentially spin it so that it covers all of the areas in the interior mold and then make sure you know it coats everything and then you're going to let it sit and it takes I don't know exactly offhand, but it takes about, I'm thinking 20 minutes um, in order for the next batch, because you don't want the original batch to harden so much that it doesn't adhere to the second coat. So, you know, it will be um, a little bit tacky, but that's fine. You pour your next coat on top of that one and you rotary cast it again. Uh, you spin it in all directions, even spill out a little bit in order to you know get the edges it does happen i use a painter's uh tray to catch the you know residuals that fall out and um you know that's the second coat and you do that same thing for the third fourth however many coats you want is how thick it will be so you do want it to be fairly thick um i think i normally do about four to five coats of this and um then you let it sit remove out remove the outer uh, what is this made of plaster you remove this plaster and once you here i'll do it just to show you there we go so i know this is a whole different process inside of here um, this is the original silicone mold right there and again, this is a whole nother process, uh, a lot of information needed here. Um, however, once you've poured your resin inside of here, you will take a razor blade and cut a zigzag pattern in the back so that once you open it up, it unveils your plastic cast. Um, and then you can peel it off and then, and then you essentially have this in resin. Um, so, now, as we discussed a minute ago regarding the teeth and the tongue, I found out, you know, through trial and error that it's easier to do those separately for myself. People may have their own um, ways of doing things. However, for these, after I make the tongue out of clay, uh, let's see, this one is the tongue, I will... Uh, essentially make a mold of that out of silicone and I'm not going to go into that process but I do use Platsil gel 25 um, as the mold and then I use TC 800 A and B which are very fast setting resins so it's within a few minutes that you're gonna have a final product a very hardened it does get warm it gets hot to the touch so you gotta let it cool down um, and then once that hardens your tongue you just pull it out and the same for the teeth the teeth that I use are acrylic teeth you can buy them off of Amazon um, I don't necessarily love sculpting teeth individually it's just much easier to you know set individually uh, the teeth in place and I have other videos on my channel you can check out my time-lapse videos and it kind of goes over all of these processes including the silicone mold um, so it kind of gives you a little bit of a tutorial there um, so yeah those are the uh, resins that I use for each um, process and regarding the um, Smoothcast 325 it is a color match so this one's a little distorted so let's use this one it's uh so strong this is a flesh colored and this is a white colored uh, color additive that you can put into this resin prior to pouring it into the mold so when you're weighing out your resin you'll essentially add I don't know, four, five, six, eight drops, depending on the color that you want of each of these. White, you know, white turns white pretty fast, so you don't need much. Um, same with flesh, to be honest, but 
Um, I found out you can add a little bit of flesh or a little bit more depending on the color skin tone that you want. And you can kind of see it around her eyes, uh, the flesh color. Um, there is paint there as well, however. So it basically just color coats your resin uh, and it turns it either white or flesh. There's even other colors. You can turn it yellow or red or whatever. Um, but these are the most practical use ones that I found. Um, so it helps you when you pull your cast out of the mold. It's already essentially, it's either more of a white, which is kind of a primer color. You can paint on top of white very easily. Um, or a flesh tone, which kind of already sets you up for success uh, for an actual flesh tone that you want to paint. Um, so just a little bit of a tip there regarding resin. I know, you know, I had to do a lot of research and the information's out there. Um, smooth on, smooth cast. I believe they make tutorial videos um, that are, you know, work really well if you're trying to learn this process. And um, brick in the mold, brick in the yard mold supply, excuse me. Um, they're where I get my TC 800. They're also where I get flat cell gels. I have much bigger bottles of these. However, these are small bottles. Um, so there's a, there's a quite a bit of material used for this entire process. Um, but I found that by smooth on and brick in the yard mold supply, I was able to get everything I needed. So hats off to those guys um, for providing everything and, you know, for providing information on it as well. So check them out. Uh, it's by no means I'm not sponsored by them. I'm just, you know, I just found that they're very helpful in this process. So back to Harley Quinn. That was a little bit of tip. And uh, back to the show. Um, her eyes, I actually got off of Deadhead Props. You can find them on Amazon. They are somewhat realistic, not super hyper realistic. Um, but they do the job, and especially these ones, they're, they're a little bit more realistic than normal. They are 26 millimeter, so if you were curious about the size, um, they work well, and they're cheap, and Amazon gets them to you, as you all know, pretty fast. So, uh, she came out pretty wicked. Um, I even suited her up with her little necklace that says Bruce on it. Um, it's per the movie, so it's a kind of like a movie prop replica. Um, and yeah, so she was fun. The hair was a little bit challenging, but fun nonetheless. And I think it turned out well, you know, it, obviously it's not a, a perfect replica by any means. I'm not claiming that it is, um, but she looks cool. She's a, she's a cool add, add on to the collection. Um, and I have the mold of her so I can make copies and uh, cast more um, cast more of her. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you got something out of it if you were, you know, trying to get some more information based off of uh, roto, rotary casting. Um, I hope that helped a little bit. Again, check out my other videos and I'll be making more uh, show and tip videos. So check those out if you want a little bit more information but as always thank you guys so much for tuning in to the clay table be on the lookout for more videos be well be safe peace